Well, now at the end of the show, I have a little surprise for you. And you know, the most celebrity classical musician in Louisville um, is now with us and is actually a good friend. So hi, Teddy. Thanks for joining us. So good to see you. What a, what a great uh, opportunity here to reconnect. It's been too long. I know, I know. And I, I was thinking about it that, of course, we made music together in Phoenix from all places. We did the Shostakovich and I remember that besides the main concert in, in the big hall, we had this uh, outreach. We had to go in a car like in the middle of the desert and we had another concert. But actually, we, we did really meet and chat and talk in Louisville because I came there to play, but you did not conduct. You yeah, hosted you us. Conductor. Yeah. And uh, that was really nice because usually when we play together, we are both busy and we go to the hotel and do our stuff and then we meet on stage. But you were just, what I remember is you on bicycles. So can you tell me about your bikes? <laughs> I remember you going all over town in bicycles. Yeah, that, that's, that's the only way I get around. I just, I just bike, um, which is you know, considered a little bit crazy in, <laughs> in Louisville, but uh, it, I, I made it work for seven years. Um, Hello. That's not probably possible. I know, but it, it's it's stuck, right. You've got to. Yeah. 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 I remember we were talking I mean, because I, when we got together last, you were just about to set off on your big adventure. Yes. Um, to, to retrace uh, Casal's tour of America, exactly. right? How, how yeah. did that end up going? I don't think we spoke about it after. Yeah. Well, I did it. I did. I went with a truck, you know, all over the, the country. We just crossed it. And we stopped in, in little middle of nowhere towns, even smaller than Louisville. <laughs> and we, we played a program that we found, we researched and we found that he actually played in those places 100 years ago. And that, it was an amazing, amazing experience just to share music like this. And uh, yeah, I'll never forget it. And it was unbelievable. But I remember we talked about it and, and I just did it. Um, I was so yeah. curious. I was so curious because it's um, that's really an adventurous thing that a lot of people they don't like to get outside their comfort zone. I was thinking, wow, this is really amazing that you're going to take your cello and and play in all these unconventional spaces that aren't you, they don't have the traditional comforts of the you know the symphony orchestra experience, right? I mean, where, where were yeah. you performing in some of these towns? Was it was it at, at concert halls or was it within the truck? Or no, well, it, uh, it was in high schools, libraries, um, restaurants. And, you know, we played, I remember, one in, in Duluth, Minnesota. But we, we, we kept track of where he was. And, and the main, actually, lesson for me as a musician was that these great masters, 100 years ago, they did play in small places. I mean, the, the people, little club, or uh, all those little uh, organizations that kept going until today, they kept the programs. And you see that Pablo Casals played in, in Duluth, Pablo Casals played in Loveland, Colorado, you know, all those places. They actually stopped there and played, which is really a lesson for us. You know, we don't have to just play in the big halls for 3,000 people. We can go. And I think now with the pandemic, we are realizing that, you know, things will become, again, smaller and more like family circles. And uh, that was a great for me when I cello uh, Mrs. Casals told me you know go find your voice and I thought oh sure I'll, I'll just find my voice but uh, it's not I, I don't think she meant that and now I realize because of that tour and because of the experience of sharing music in those small places that this is a voice this is what's my call in a way but I also remember when we took the car ride you told me about your crazy jazz group that also went like with clarinet and is it time for three or, or something? We are, we're the sixth floor trio when we get together. Yeah, there's, then there's time for three too. That we, you know, they were also a Curtis group. They were at Curtis Institute, but a little bit earlier than, than I was there. And yeah, we, well, that was why I was so interested in your, in your project because we had done a, a tour. It wasn't quite the same idea of, of playing you know, full concerts, but we had done these tours around the country where we were supposed to be playing these random acts of culture, they called them, surprise almost flash mobs, but not really flash mobs, because, you know, the flash mob almost implies that there's a little bit of conflict or, or there's an element of, of, um, of, of challenge. And we yeah. weren't doing that. We were, we were asked by the Knight Foundation to go and just bring a little bit of music into people's lives unexpectedly in places where they never think to find it. And uh, I, I had the same experience as you, that, that being forced outside of the normal concert experience and having to be very flexible and not yeah. not reliant on all the things that make it 
kind of easy and comfortable to play was a big growth experience because when you're out in a mall or in a public park or at an airport and you're just you know supposed to go up and surprise somebody with a you know five minute piece and then leave you don't get to, you know, go through your whole process of, of what it's yeah. like to perform. And, and it, you know, it forces you to just be a lot more um, natural. And, and I don't know how, how, when you finished your tour, did that, did that affect how you then performed in other ways? Did, did it change anything? Absolutely. It affected in, in actually in two main ways. One was the programming that I, I realized that those great masters, like, again, I go back to Deleuze, but it's just the program there strike me because he played the Dvosha Concello, which I played in Louisville when yes. I was there with a big orchestra, but he played it with piano and it was in a house. So that was number one. That, so they constructed concerts, programs like a meal. They would have a, an aperitif, sort of, and then big steak or whatever, you know, Dvosha Concello, or he would put a Bach suite or a sonata. And then second half was all hors d'oeuvres, all like uh, um, desserts. You know, just show, show pieces, salon music, two minutes, three minutes, taking you around the world, always the same. And I saw the reaction of the audience. They, they go wild because it's like a good meal. You don't eat. I feel that sometimes these days we do like the three steak meal. You know, we put them all and more and we say, no, I can play. I can do a whole cycle. No, I can do a cycle and another piece. And, and it just, it's too heavy. So concerts were a little shorter, but about minutes and it was really a feeling of a meal like you warm your your belly you have a big steak you talk and then you have just little bonbons you know and yeah. it just it, it that was a great lesson and then the other one was that in, in multiple pro, uh, reviews not programs but reviews they mentioned that this great man actually stayed for an hour and a half to talk to each member of the audience and you think I mean we have to understand that Pablo Casals in 1918, 1917 was the Beatles. I mean, he was the biggest star, not just classical music. There was nothing but classical music. So he was a celebrity. Uh, Chrysler was a celebrity. Chrysler, the violinist, when he arrived in a town in America in the train, people would wait with flags in the train station. I mean, they were, they were huge stars. So for them to stay for an hour and a half, how many of us stay for an hour and a half after a concert to talk to orchestra to, to, to members in the audience. It doesn't happen so much. So yeah. those two things were really a great, um, great lesson for me. And I, I try now, even with orchestra, you know, sometimes I take a mic and I speak and then they say, oh, the union doesn't allow blah, 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 blah. But I do it. And, and I think people love just to hear your voice and to see that you're a person, you know, you're yeah. not just yeah. this this alien. But anyway, I know that you, you're busy and I just wanted to say another cool thing. Here we are, two Jews, two young Jewish kids talking about music and not about Israel, which is kind of cool, I think. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I know, yeah, we, Israel, Israel didn't, did not come up, but, but I mean, I think that, um, you know, does your Jewish identity and background, does that play into anything that you've been experiencing during the, the, the pandemic? Has, has that been a source of um, any strength or, or, or do you think about that much? Well, I have to be honest, I'm not, not religious in any way, but the identity of being Israeli and being Jewish and also being American. I mean, I now being home with the kids and I've actually have done a lot of the programs that I, I just did uh, now in the synagogue where Zoom and the technology have allowed me through the pandemic to actually reach out much more than during normal times and to share my identity, my story and the music, the music that I grew up on, um, which is what I did today. And that has been only thanks to the pandemic, because usually when I travel, you know, you don't play normally in a JCC on a synagogue, you play in the big concert hall, but I see it as uh, just following our conversation, it's as important and as meaningful. And especially when I can, can surround it with some uh, personal stories, which is the reason why we play. I mean, I even remember you telling me stories about clarinet, about Shostakovich. I remember you came in and I was very impressed how you came in with a score and boom, you played the whole thing on the piano in Phoenix. <laughs> and I was so impressed, but you told me a little bit about later about how you grew up with MTT in, in San Francisco and about the whole experience of becoming musician like this. And this 
things affect me more than, oh, he can play the Shostakovich from the score. It's like, I got a little bit of sense of who you are, and I think being Jewish and being doing those programs, the, the point is to leave a mark of who you are and what that music is for you. And, and yeah. the pandemic has allowed me to do that more, definitely. That's, that's so fascinating. I think there is a lot about the, uh, the industry, the music world that we, we, we don't question. You know, we just keep on going through it, but we don't take a step back to say, wait, does that even make sense? Or is that the best yeah. way to do this? Or are we even, are we having fun by doing it this way? Exactly. And now all of a sudden we have to ask those questions because of everything's up for grabs now. We can rebuild it. And I think a lot of that has to do with the pace of it and just the way we present the music. It's all so formal and locked into, into one system and uh, I mean, I know that you're you're always looking to change that. I mean, I, I, I get your updates and there's always, you know, new projects, new ideas, which is great. But a lot of people, maybe they don't feel so much in the past, like they could expand the role and expand the way they play or expand the people they meet or even just have a personal element in it. It's so boxed in. I, I, I don't know. I feel like there's an opportunity to change that. Do, do, do you yeah, think well, I, I know that you're doing it too in, in Louisville. I mean, I see all the tweets and stuff and you come with the electric piano outside to the street and so it's wonderful to being forced together because we're Jewish um, into this talk and to find out that we have so many other things in common of course as musicians and as artists and I think I think Louisville is very lucky let me just uh, end with this <laughs> well we're very lucky that you're joining us for this 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 concert thank you for having done this it's, I, I can't wait to watch it and uh, it's just it's just amazing um of you to, to to be so generous with us thank you so next time i'm gonna get i will rent bikes and we will go on a ride <laughs> you strap strap the cello to, to the back <laughs> okay great teddy great to talk to you likewise